Welcome back, you guys, to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. Your host, Donita here. Today's title is how we can really break that all-in, all-out mindset that we get with that perfectionist trap. Welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. We're making it possible for busy women to sculpt and tone in just 15 minutes a day. It's either great for beginners or stackable for advanced. So whether you're looking for a women's complete home gym, a free routine for consistency, or full guided workouts in our app, we've got you covered to really unleash your empowered self and step back into your confidence. So you can visit our store, bootybands.com and subscribe so you get notifications for every episode that drops every Sunday. So my name's Angela and a little bit about me is I am passionate about health and wellness. Uh, I spend my days teaching little first graders. I'm currently planning a wedding and super busy with that. So that has been a juggle in and of itself with the perfectionist mindset and something that I'm working through. You brought up perfectionism, which I want to go into. For somebody that's listening on the on the podcast right now, they're like, oh yeah, I'm a perfectionist too. What are, what are some traits that you've noticed? So oftentimes I would set these really unrealistic expectations of myself and therefore mirror them onto others. Uh, whether that was, I'm going to have the perfect workout or I'm going to eat perfectly all week, or even something as simple as in the classroom, like, oh, this lesson's going to go perfect. Or in the outside world, like I'm going to accomplish all of these tasks in this amount of time and everything's going to be rainbows and butterflies. And that's something I've worked on in different ways and it's manifested in different ways over the years. And so it's been interesting being a little bit more self-reflective and thinking back on maybe where did this stem from and maybe what's a better way of looking at that type of lifestyle. So where do you think perfectionism usually ends up coming for people that have it? Uh, I would say oftentimes it's most likely triggered from childhood or in younger developmental years. Um, So for me, I come from a really large family. In some ways, you foster your own sense of independence because obviously your parents are busy with a lot of different people or kids. Um, In other ways, something that was kind of ingrained in how I was raised and almost in my own personality, like I really enjoyed what I thought was the security of being perfect, even though I've since then learned that's a false sense of security and safety. And it's interesting, everyone might have their own version of, but I absolutely agree with you that it could stem from childhood. My sister has perfectionism tendencies and she bucketed it to a time in her life that uh, she was getting disciplined and she didn't like that feeling of getting ridiculed or disciplined. And so she goes, you know what? I'm going to become so perfect that people can't do that to me again. It's almost kind of a protection mechanism to be like, "Mm, you can't scold me anymore because I'm perfect. And I can definitely connect with that feeling and sense. And again, if you're doing things perfectly, who can pick on you or who can kind of nitpick at what you're doing or how you're approaching things. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, great. So uh, let's go ahead and go into the topic for today. So the topic is really about these perfectionism programs that are out there that have created almost kind of this spiral effect that has created unsustainable or inconsistency or just this extreme levels of all in all out that made it so it's really hard to reach your goals. Again, as I had mentioned, it's, I would almost call like a tendency of me to be all in or all out over time. I've just developed that. I was again, going to do something really well, or I probably wasn't going to do it at all. And so I don't know if I, by luck gravitated towards things that kind of modeled that same thing. So that felt comfortable. And so that's what, again, I latched onto, but I got involved a few years ago with various different programs. And one in particular had a really great idea, but maybe wasn't executed in the most sustainable or healthy way. And so in this particular program, they had all these specific rules of these are the things you can eat. This is what you can't eat. Here's how much of this you need to eat. Just a very rigorous program that I had bought into. And I was really excited about it initially. And then day after day, and then week after week and month after month, like I wasn't in my eyes meeting that expectation. And the people leading the program, again, meaning well, I believe, Uh, were also very all in, all out and had very high expectations. So for them, they had kind of taken stair steps where they didn't just jump in and all of a sudden go 100%. They had, again, week after week, maybe implemented a few more of these things at a time. But when they were training people or coaching people to try and jump into this program, their expectation almost was to be at that 100% without taking the necessary steps beforehand. So it was so overwhelming. And I just kept feeling like I was defeated and that no matter what approach I was taking, like I wasn't doing it well enough or I was messing up on something that was probably a really little detail. But since it was such a rigorous program and so you have to do this at this time 
this frequency, um, it became really overwhelming and honestly frustrating. And so again, I had that program written up with all of the outline, all of the notes, all of the requirements. And again, I just was constantly missing the mark according to the program's eyes and therefore according to my eyes. And I never finished the program mainly because I felt like it was not sustainable and it was affecting in my personal perspective, like my mood and my, my thought process towards myself, because again, I was constantly in my eyes feeling let down because I wasn't able to meet that mark. But again, nobody goes zero to a hundred. What were some of the restrictions? Obviously no sugars, no sodas. It was no grains, no breads, no dairy. So they had a long list of no's and a small list of yes. And again, like the reality is we're all humans. We're out and about. We want to be able to go to a restaurant and get something without feeling guilty. So like they were very big on grass fed and all of that things, which is great. And honestly, if I get a choice, that's what I would prefer to be consuming in regards to meat products. However, um, sometimes you're at a restaurant and like their, their request was that you like pretty much pester or ask your waiter, like all the specifics, like, where did you get this potato from? Like, where did you get this chicken from? Like, what is the process with this? And I get the principle behind that. But again, like that's very difficult to sustain every place you go, anytime you ever go out anywhere. And it just makes almost food seem like it's the enemy and that you only have like 5% of what is actually available out there for you to be able to consume. And you're supposed to say no to 95% of everything else all the time. Mess up once, you've messed up what you've done for that week or that day. And I can even see as a perfectionist, that'd be so hard because if the waiter does come back to you and it's like, oh yeah, it's not grass fed. And then you're eating it and the whole time you're just like, oh, I'm I'm not doing my program perfectly. And so it kind of creates this this issue. Like you're saying the food is the enemy. All of a sudden you're, you're almost rejecting, you're almost putting this negative energy into the food that you're putting into your body. Yes, no, definitely. Interesting. Okay. So what did these beliefs that you've had, how did it almost kind of like create this separation from living your real life? I think it almost made me think of myself in two different versions, like the version who attempted to keep up. And for a period of time, I did the version who was perfect and hitting all the workouts at 4 a.m. and constantly chasing the goals. And then on the other side from the all in or all out, the side of me who if I wasn't capable of doing all of those things or something had come up in life that needed my attention right away, I all of a sudden felt like I'm the complete opposite of who I am. So instead of a consistent, like I am Angela and I am all of these wonderful things. And sometimes life gets in the way and sometimes there's a curveball, and that's okay. It was almost like a split where like, I'm either going to be like this super gym focus, super health oriented, like work super hard and have all these insanely high expectations that again, aren't sustainable, or I'm going to like sit on the couch and eat potato chips and watch six hours of Netflix. Like I didn't have a happy median. I almost identified as I'm either this or I'm that instead of building again, more of a middle ground. Oh yeah. I know so many listeners can relate to all of this right now. So thanks for sharing that. So my question for you then is, um, What were me? What were so you mentioned some of the things that were perfectionist? You've even mentioned one time that it was almost like fruit was bad. Tell us about that moment. Yeah, it was difficult. I love fruit, and again, back to the sugar. There, the the requirements of the program was to only have a certain allotment of of fruit. And again, I I get that there's different nutritional values that each type of food product can can share with you, and that some are higher in sugar than others. Again, I always guess I thought that as a whole, if you were consuming a balanced level of things, um, that fruit was considered a fairly healthy one. And so with that program, it was only like berries. And I mean, even like bananas and apples and things that again, I had viewed as nutritional things, or at least things that you can pair with some form of protein as being healthy was then all of a sudden on a list of no's. Like it was pretty much just strawberries, blueberries, or blackberries. Okay. So how did you end up breaking this cookie cutter mindset? Um, I think I spent a lot of time self exploring and then honestly getting plugged into the booty bands community and I was shed light into a different way of doing things and again obviously the philosophies in a way with a nutrition standpoint were similar like yes eat good foods fuel your body give your body what you need, but 
having those five French fries along with your form of protein is not going to completely jeopardize everything that you're doing. You don't have to be a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time and constantly, honestly, starting a negative loop in your mind just to maintain that perfect state. Instead, you can eat the foods that you would like. Again, be smart about it and pair them up with things that are rich in protein and that do provide nutritional value and maybe cut back the portion size. You don't need to eat a whole entire basket of fries. But again, maybe if you're eating healthy foods and you have those five French fries, again, a balance is better than all in or all out. Because again, I went through a period of time of being that quote, near perfect nutrition plan and workout plan. And I wasn't happy. And then on the counter, I threw myself under the bus and I was all out with it. And I sat around and ate a bunch of poor food. And like, obviously that has consequences too. So finding a way to be in the middle is again, obviously something that booty bands definitely talks about and encourages, and it makes a big difference. That's great. So what was the mindset when you had something bad in the past compared to now take us through both mindsets. Like when you had, when you ate something bad before, and now when you're in booty bands, when you eat some, when you eat something bad, what's the mindset then? I would say it's a completely different mindset and a completely different timeline in the past. Again, if I ate that cookie or I had that Starbucks hot chocolate or whatever I had, even if it was as simple as I had that banana, Um, I mean, I would sit there and be think, wow, like the whole day's ruined. I've completely jeopardized what, what I'm supposed to be giving my body. And then again, I would often sabotage myself where once I started, then it was like, what is the point of this day? Or what is the point today? I just need to restart tomorrow. And then the difference is now my mindset is like, if I go out and I have a glass of wine at dinner, or I have a cookie out and about because it's my niece's birthday party, I can just go right back to eating what I would normally be eating and fueling my body the next meal. Or if I'm going to have that dessert or I'm going to have that sugar of some sort, again, obviously a modification, but maybe I eat some form of protein first and then I just move on. So instead of having it ruin the rest of the day on what I would eat or choose to eat, it's one tiny time period. It's one cookie and you just move on. And the more you focus on it and the more, at least in my case, that I beat myself up about it, the bigger of an issue it became. Yeah. I like that. I I like how you put that. And and the way that I've put it too, which is exactly similar is it was never the donut that made you fat. It was the self-sabotage after you ate the donut that led for days, weeks, months, even possible years of our restriction, our guilt, our shame that we put on ourselves after that. So yeah, that's exactly what you just mentioned. So thanks for sharing that and how you went through that process too. Um, so how would you say that your relationship with food and maybe workouts are now with like, how, what is healthy to you now? What, what, what is that transition? Uh, healthy for me is obviously still moving my body and fueling my body. Uh, healthy. I've tried to redefine again, back to that perfectionist mindset with workouts. I used to think I had to do a 40 minute workout or a 50 minute workout because that's just what I did at one period in life. And so I held myself to that high expectation and it was either going to be, I was going to do a 40 minute workout or no workout. And now obviously, ideally I still enjoy having lengthier workouts, but maybe one day something's come up and I have a 10 to 15 minute workout compared to that 40 minute workout. And I've learned that it's much better to do that 10 minute or workout or 15 minute workout consistently, instead of waiting for that opportunity to have that perfect 40 minute workout regarding food. I'm better off having that treat or having that snack once in a while, again, while still eating other healthy options throughout the day, than it is to try to eat so perfectly and never meet that mark. And instead of eating that one cookie, end up eating 10 cookies a day because I feel like I'm constantly losing or constantly not measuring up. Yeah. So what are some of the phrases you say to yourself? So if somebody is stuck in that perfectionism mindset, what would you say is your affirmations? Like right after you screw up, AKA. Oh, one is that one snack or that one workout doesn't define who I am. Uh, that one choice or that one time of going out to dinner and maybe a place that has a lot of fried food, that's not going to completely jeopardize everything that I am doing and all the work I'm putting in. Again, there's a balance with that. So obviously I can't tell myself that every meal or every day, um, but just having more of the grace and empathy with myself and say, okay, like 
it is what it is. That's, that's where we went. That's what we did. How can I make a better choice next time? And I would say, I try to be a bit more proactive now. And if I know what restaurant I'm going to go to, or if I know what kind of space I'm going to be at, um, I try to find alternatives or I try to find where maybe instead of eating a full portion of something, I will, go with my friend or and with my fiance and we'll split something. And so maybe I have a nice salad that's got great chicken and just a little bit of dressing or some sort of vinaigrette. And then maybe we get a side of something and we share that. And so instead of eating the whole thing myself, maybe I eat a fraction of it. So again, I try to not restrict, but more so just reduce how much of something I'm eating or else replace it with something that I find equally as tasty. Yes, those are great. Thanks for sharing that because I think that will help a lot of people that are listening going, how do I actually forgive myself? Like, what is the actual action step? So thanks for sharing that because that's really what it is. It's thought. It's the thought that you're telling yourself, like you said, you gave yourself the grace and you said empathy. That was awesome. Just giving yourself that feeling immediately to go back and just love yourself, not hate yourself through weight loss. That doesn't, that's just that negative loop of falling off again. So Some of the things that I have noticed when people are coming into booty bands and barbells, they buy a program and uh, they actually get a call with a coach and, and things that I'm hearing is, oh yeah, I'm constantly starting. I'm constantly stopping. I'm off the wagon. I'm on the wagon, or I just need something extremely specific. Like just tell me what to eat and I'll eat just that. (laughs) And these are things I hear on like a daily basis. That sounds like my program. (laughs) original program, I should say. Yeah. And it's interesting that I'm like, I have got to have this call with Angela because this podcast with Angela, because there's so many women that are struggling with this. And one of my favorite things that I said to her in this kind of aha moment, when they came in and said those things, I said, all right, so if you're telling me you want something so specific of what to eat, so specific and so detailed, and it's just, this is the only thing that you can eat. Then if you go on vacation or you go on that uh, uh, trip or you go, or maybe you get sick, then what happens is we find ourselves almost in this food jail that we are so restricted to the things that I gave you that it doesn't allow that freedom. And so what would you say, Angela, when we talk about jail versus freedom now, how has this been for you where the other programs you had were so restrictive where booty bands and barbells is way more freedom, freedom focused. Yeah, so definitely. I mean, I travel here and there and I'm constantly on the go. And so having options is amazing. So compared to, okay, these are your items that you're going to eat for this meal. Again, I do try to be intentional and plan ahead, but there are times I'm on the go and there are times that I need to find an alternative. And since there are options, again, obviously I'm looking for something that is rich in protein and low in fat, and that is going to fuel my body. Um, but again, I don't have a specific list of, oh my goodness, I need to drive 30 minutes out of my way to go to this one restaurant that this program has approved, which actually there was an approval list of restaurants too. So that was hard. Um, So I don't have that type of rigor and stress. If I need to stop by the local grocery store and pick up a few ingredients and throw together a salad quickly, great. I don't have this specific brand that I need to go buy at this specific store. Um, If I'm going to a restaurant, again, there are oftentimes several options available at a restaurant. So again, I'll be mindful of what I'm picking, but I also am graceful enough with myself that I'm going to pick the healthiest option that I can find. And that still sounds delicious to me. And I'm going to go with that. Yeah. I love it. Thanks for sharing that. So let's just go ahead and wrap up here. So thank you for the uh, knowledge and wisdom that you gave today on today's podcast. What would be some final statements that you feel like we haven't maybe captured yet that you would like to tell somebody that is almost like the past Angela What would you like to tell her if you're now in your future self, what would you say to your older self? I would say you don't need to be all in or all out. You don't need to make this elaborate to-do list or checklist of how to be healthy and beat yourself up or negatively talk to yourself when you don't reach that. Again, we're all busy. We all have life throw us curveballs and we can't plan for what is always going to happen in a day. We can surely try. And believe me, I tried, but we can't always predict everything that comes our way. And so be graceful with yourself 
if for some reason you make a, a not great choice on what you're eating or you skip three days of working out, okay, great. Then just move, go do that walk. And you don't have to define success as doing something again to the to the highest degree. If you only have time for a 10 minute workout or a 20 minute workout or whatever you have moving your body in any degree is much better than sitting on the couch and talking yourself out of moving for that 10 minutes that you might have. 10 minutes of moving is better than no minutes of moving. And the small steps you take each day, whether that's the food or the working out or the mindset, will benefit you tenfold the next day and the next day. And oftentimes people focus so much on a huge change instead of focusing on being 0.5% better each day. And that eventually stacks. But if you all of a sudden say, I'm going to do this checklist of 20 things starting tomorrow, when you don't do that, you're going to start and stop and start and stop. And six months down the road, a year down the road, you might be back in the same square you already are instead of if you took one of those tasks on the next week and another one on the following week. So make your, your goals attainable and find that accountability. Yeah, wow, that, that visual of almost like, like on a treadmill and not going anywhere like a year from now and, and you're just not moving, there's no ground that you broke. Oh my gosh, that's gotta be the worst feeling ever. So I like that you said breaking it down into just that, you know, that percentage is super small percentages. So you are inching forward and you see that growth because yeah, a year goes by and you look back and you're like, Whoa, how'd I get here? Rather than like you mentioned, doing it all at once and creating that inconsistency doesn't get you anywhere. So thanks for sharing that. It's awesome. All right, Angela. Well, thanks so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Um, a lot of great information that, uh, that you shared with us today. Hopefully this can help one of those members out there that are listening, just really break that perfectionism. So appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys on the next podcast. Awesome. Wrapping up, we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind, your body, and your life. Really, we're about helping you step into your best self, and that's why we do these weekly, so that we can hear from you and how it resonated. So go ahead and write us a review, and we will pick weekly giveaways on our unique booty bands to give away. So thank you guys so much for listening. It was awesome having you on. I'm very excited to leave your review. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you can get notified on any future podcasts that come out. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells, well, you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon, and I'll see you in the workouts.